When it comes to validation, analytical test methods used for medicinal products based on biological molecules can be a bit tricky to deal with. Coming up with a suitable design for the validation protocol can be quite difficult. In particular, the choice of what parameters to investigate and the design of the associated experiments. One of the main features that makes biomolecules more difficult is their size and associated complex structure. They are generally big molecules when compared to more traditional pharmaceutical active ingredients, and this means that they not only contain more functional groups, but also the orientation of the parts of the molecule in space is more complicated. This is the structure of an aspirin molecule. There are only nine carbon atoms present, with a total mass of just 180 daltons. Contrast this with an example of a very large biopharmaceutical, a monoclonal antibody, a rather beautiful representation of which is shown here. Monoclonal antibodies, such as bevacizumab here, have many more carbon atoms than the little aspirin molecule at over 6,000 and have a total mass of approximately 149 kilodaltons, over 800 times bigger than aspirin. Of course, not all biopharmaceuticals are as big as monoclonal antibodies, but they still often have large and complex structures. What this means when it comes to testing methods is that if we wanted to test these aspirin tablets, then it is conceivable that a single test method, such as a chromatographic separation, could be used to provide all the information we require. Using a jigsaw puzzle analogy, the test method could provide different pieces of the puzzle that gives us the information we want, such as the amount of the aspirin molecule present in the tablets and the amounts of other undesirable impurity molecules to result in a full picture of what is in the sample. However, if we look at a biopharmaceutical sample, you can see already that our puzzle pieces are much smaller. A single test method will not be enough to provide all the information that we want because there is so much more to consider. The puzzle pieces from one test method may build up an important picture of a particular attribute, perhaps the biological activity or the glycans present, but we will need multiple test methods to really describe the biomolecule in terms of other attributes such as its higher order structure, presence of variants and impurities. The aim of validation is to demonstrate, typically via experiments, that the method is suitable for its intended use. The reason that bio-test methods are tricky to validate is that they are complex methods. Method validation for biopharmaceuticals usually follows the ICH guidance Q2R1, which lists a number of parameters which should be investigated for different types of methods. These are called validation characteristics in the ICH guidance but are now more commonly referred to as method performance characteristics, since they don't just relate to validation activities. If we have a look at this list, we can pick out some of the most troublesome characteristics for biotest methods. The quantitative parameters are often the most challenging. Accuracy, in particular, may be very difficult. A common problem is that there is often no reference material available that is suitable for the test and therefore it is not possible to compare the outcome of any experiments to a true value. The purpose of the accuracy investigation is to show that the value determined by the test is close to the true value, shown here as how close the arrow is to the centre of the target. If you don't know the true value, then you can't assert that the test method is accurate. Examples would be analysis of variants, where it is impossible to isolate samples of each variant in order to check exactly how much is there. Or impurities methods, where you may not definitively know what the impurity is, never mind have a sample of it to provide a true value. This forces us to make assumptions about the biomolecule and what the test is actually measuring, such as assuming that the area of the peak in electropherogram or chromatogram actually represents how much is there compared to the other peaks. It is not actually possible to investigate accuracy, so we use other strategies to build up as much evidence as possible to show that the method is probably okay. Another characteristic affected by the lack of a true value is the quantitation limit. Without reference material, we have to use dilutions to try and establish the most likely lowest level at which the method generates reasonable results. Linearity is also problematic. Many biotest methods are not actually linear, the most common example being a biological assay, which typically has a sigmoidal relationship. 
So really what we want to look at is the suitability of the calibration technique in the method. This is usually very complex for a bioassay, but even for a more straightforward physical chemical method, which does have a linear relationship, it can still be challenging. To create this sort of plot, where we compare the amount of the material in question with the response obtained by following the method, we will need a range of concentrations. If we want to validate a method for a variant or an impurity, as we have discussed previously, we are very unlikely to have reference material, which would allow changing the concentration of this component only and keeping the rest of the sample consistent over the full range required. What we will probably do instead is to perform dilutions on a sample of our material to achieve the range. This is not representative of the method, nor really is injecting different amounts instead of changing the concentration. Another challenge of the calibration method is when area percent normalization is used for quantification. In this example of an electropherogram from a capillary electrophoresis method, the area of all the peaks would be assigned as 100% and each individual peak would then be calculated as a percentage of the total. This assumes a linear relationship right down to the origin of the calibration curve, where the response and concentration both equal zero. It is difficult to prove this assumption through experiments when reference material is not available. We have looked at just a few of the challenges when validating biomethods to give you a taste of the problems and underlying reasons. So what's the takeaway message? Well, number one is that size matters. Biomolecules are generally larger than traditional drug molecules, and thus their structure is more complex. Number two is that the structural complexity of biomolecules means that a range of methods is required to test them. No one method can provide all the required information. And number three is that the validation of biotest methods is tricky because the methods often necessitate assumptions that are hard to prove experimentally. If you want to validate one of these methods, it will be easier if you have a very good understanding of how the method works, including all its assumptions and limitations. This video was brought to you by Morn Training Services Limited. If you would like to find out more about validating biotest methods, then why don't you come on our training course, Validation and Transfer of Methods for Biopharmaceutical Analysis. We run it throughout the year at locations in London, Berlin and Dublin or we can visit your site and deliver the course for you there. Visit the course list page on the MTS website or simply Google Morn Training Services to find out more and to make a booking.